the sisters who have never ever been married before and the sisters who have been married and have now divorced and you know living the single life we have fears of being heartbroken again we have fears of repeating the same pattern wallahi yes there's so many divorces happening right now but don't be discouraged by that my heart came down like i felt better so say our stuff for all the time because it really brings us peace because we're asking for a righteous and pious husband righteous and pious people have fallen off as well why not why not Ya Allah, I'm giving this sadaqa because I'm asking you to please bless me with a righteous and pious husband. We need to heal our childhood trauma, teenage trauma, adulthood trauma. Find out what your attachment style is. Find out if you have a fada wundo. Listen, to become the best version of ourselves is putting our religion first, you know, and copying those people who came before us and being more like them. If you know how to regulate yourself, you will be able to control yourself. And I don't want any sisters to hold back from such a beautiful blessing. Marriage is a blessing. You know, just being in a marriage and having the ability to spend. Assalamu alaikum sisters, how you all doing? I hope you all are well and good. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, you're so welcome, welcome. So many new sisters. I'm so happy you guys are here, alhamdulillah. Let's grow this community, because this community is about, one of my um, new subscribers said, and I love it, and I really understand why she said that because she said it in the comment that she's now a personal development coach. She said to me, grow, glow and go. And when I read it, I was so amazed. I'm like, Allahumma barik. Because in this channel, I want all of us to grow in deen. I want all of us to grow in the dunya and become better versions of ourselves. And I want us to glow. I want us to prioritize self-care. I want us to prioritize healing our trauma. Because nobody can ever come to me like, no, I don't have any trauma. I used to believe it. I used to believe that. There are actually people who have never experienced any kind of trauma, but trust me, trauma can be the littlest thing. Like imagine when you were younger and your mum probably was five minutes late to pick you up from school. That can tap with your brain. Like literally we all have something that we need to unpack and heal from, you know? We need to glow in that aspect and we need to keep going. Allahumma barik. When she said that, I was so happy. So grow, glow and go. And sis, I hope I'm not stealing your slogan or anything, but I think it's so amazing. I really, really like that. So yeah, welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Alhamdulillah. So in today's video, I want to speak directly to the single sisters, the sisters who have never, ever been married before and the sisters who have been married and have now divorced and, you know, living the single life. Alhamdulillah, I want to talk to you all. So I know a lot of us have fear, the fear of, you know, getting married again or being uncertain about marriage. First of all, I just want to say these fears that we have are valid we have fears of being heartbroken again we have fears of repeating the same pattern we have fears of not finding the um the right husband you know subhanallah all these fears are valid but i just want you all to know that we can't let it consume us we cannot let it consume us you understand we have to remember who our lord is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our lord and with allah everything is possible we have to have tawakkul in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bi idnillah these fears will go so in this video i want to talk about some of the things that we need to do spiritually things that we need to do emotionally and physically to basically prepare ourselves and basically help us to get rid of that fear of getting into another relationship or for the sisters who have never been married before that fear of you know getting married because trust me sisters wallahi yes there's so many divorces happening right now but don't be discouraged by that remember one of the signs of the end the signs of the end is that there's going to be lots of divorces remember once upon a time subhanallah yeah maybe 15 years ago i know i'm old I'm, I'm actually old but trust me i'm 21 at heart <laughs> so 15 years ago yeah everyone and their auntie and their sister and their mom was getting married now 15 years later everyone is getting divorced subhanallah you know it's a sign of the hour and that's something that's going to happen and yes allah dislikes divorce but it's something that we can't control you know sometimes some relationships just have to come to an end but not because people are getting divorced should not discourage you from experiencing something beautiful something that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed for us something that's going to complete your deen so without any further ado let's get into the video 
So the first step in overcoming any kind of fear is to start developing a closer relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I feel like if our relationship with Allah is not good, we tend to struggle a lot in life. Let's try our best to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one of the first steps that we can take in getting closer to Allah is just perfecting our salah. Like, I think a lot of us just kind of rush us, Allah, you know, for those who pray. And some sisters are still struggling. And if you're still struggling, may Allah make it easier for you. And just know that, you know, Allah forgives all sins. And you can always come back to Allah, you know, no matter what you're doing. Like, I said it in one of my videos before that even if you're committing sin the sin that you think that you know what Allah will not even forgive this sin Allah will forgive your sin so try to perfect your salah and getting closer to Allah through that way and then another thing as well is doing istighfar doing dhikr you know istighfar really calms our heart because when we feel that anxious feeling that anxiety feeling me personally it works I remember vividly recently I was in a situation where I didn't feel safe and the feeling of anxiety is I know the feeling I know the feeling if you've ever struggled with anxiety you know what I'm talking about and when that feeling came through my body I just started saying astaghfirullah 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 and by Allah my heart came down like I felt better so say astaghfirullah all the time because it really brings us peace and when you say astaghfirullah as well of course you know you're asking Allah to forgive you so we ask Allah to forgive our sins because sometimes sins can really you know prevent us from getting the goodness that we really deserve from Allah so seek refuge all the time and ask Allah to forgive you and then also make dua sisters make dua please like you can't expect to have a righteous and pious husband without really begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this righteous and pious husband I feel like the best time to make that dua is at tahajjud time yes you can make dua you know in any of your other salah like you know during sujood but Allah said you know he comes down in a manner that befits him of course you know and he asked, which one of my servants is asking for my help? Which one of my servants is asking me? Ask and I will answer. So tahajjud time is the best time. Cry to Allah because it's so important to have a husband who you will feel safe with, who will make you, you know, feel feminine because I promise you, yeah, you marry the wrong husband, you're masculine to the core. And I don't feel like that's safe. It's just... You're just always tense. So make du'a for him. Make du'a. You have to really, be, really beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you with a righteous and pious husband. Give sadaqah if you have to, sis. Literally. I think that's something we should start giving. Why not? Why not? Ya Allah, I'm giving this sadaqah because I'm asking you to please bless me with a righteous and pious husband. Wow. That's something just came to my head. We should start doing that, you know, sisters. Because remember sadaqah, right? It's not about how much you give. It's really the intention. So you could give one P. I'm not saying give one P because you have more than one P. I know that. But I'm just saying, yeah, as an example, you could give one P in sadaqah because it's the intention. And you give that sadaqah and ask Allah, Ya Allah, I'm giving this sadaqah. Please, I want you to bless me with a righteous and pious husband. Hmm. We should do that, sisters. We should really do that, you know. SubhanAllah. <laughs> but yeah, we have to beg Allah for a righteous and pious husband. And one thing that I must say as well, Sometimes people change because you may make a du'a for a righteous and pious husband and then Allah does bless you with a righteous and pious husband. However, something happens with this brother and, you know, his iman goes down and he's incapable of increase, you know, getting back to that stage. Because I know that's happened to so many sisters, subhanAllah, whereby they're married to a really, really, really good brother. And then as time went on, you know, the brother basically stopped practicing as he used to, etc., etc., and so on. That's not our fault. That's really not our fault. And I don't feel like any sister should really blame themselves for that. You make dua. You don't blame Allah. Allah gave you what was apparent and what was good at, with this brother at the time. I think one thing that we always supposed to do as well is to actually be really, really specific with our dua. Ya Allah Azza wa Jal, I ask you for a righteous and pious husband. A husband who is god-fearing who fears you a husband who is going to protect me provide for me and a husband who is always going to constantly fight his demons a husband well did i say that wrong demons yeah he's he's nafs that's it so a husband who's always going to fight his nafs her husband who is going to be aware when his iman is going down and will quickly fight to bring his iman at a steady level i think we need to be really really specific with that da'a because we're asking for a righteous and pious husband righteous and pious people have fallen off as well 
I'm sure you know that. I'm sure you've seen so many people who we all started practicing together and now they're not even practicing. And these were people who we learned the dean from. These were people who really, really encouraged us. So what I'm one thing I would advise my single sisters, be absolutely specific with the dua that you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you're asking for absolutely anything, especially a righteous and pious husband. Don't just say a righteous and pious husband. A righteous and pious husband who will wake me up for tahajjud, who we will fast Mondays and Thursdays. Most importantly, when his iman is going down, because Ya Allah, you have said that our iman will go up and down. I want a husband who will be aware that his iman is going down and will actively work towards increasing his iman again. Hey, there's even more to that. What else would you add to that dua? Seriously, sisters, let's just be specific. I think we need to be specific when we're asking for that. And of course, everything is in the hands of Allah. If Allah bless you with something and then it turns out to not be what you desire, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, you know, because Allah doesn't make mistakes, you know, he knows what's good for us, we don't, you know, so yeah, make dua and be specific. So the next thing that I believe we need to do in order to overcome this fear is healing our trauma. We need to heal our childhood trauma, teenage trauma, adulthood trauma, every single thing. We need to let go, like all these wounds that we hold needs to go because if you take this trauma into marriage problems problems subhanallah so healing your childhood trauma is number one we have to heal our own self we have to heal that version of us that was so badly hurt and broken and heal that version of us and just let that version of us know that it's okay now everything is okay you're now loved you're not being hurt anymore you're not being harmed anymore in any shape or form and just let that version of us that version of yourself know that I am okay now and I am safe and nobody will be able to fulfill that. You would have to heal yourself. You would have to heal that inner child. And one thing I would advise any sisters before marriage, sisters, please find out what your attachment style is. Find out what your attachment style is. Are you anxiously attached? Are you dismissive avoidant? Are you a fearful avoidant? Find out what it is. Find out. I would definitely talk about it. I feel like that needs a, a total video on its own, you know. Find out what it is. Find out what your attachment style is and try to heal that. If you're anxiously attached like I was, you're going to be so needy. So needy. And no one is going to fulfill that need for you apart from yourself. You have to heal that version of you. Most anxiously attached people attract either a fearful avoidant person or a dismissive avoidant. Here you are wanting all this connection, being so needy, and the other person is avoidant. Be like, nah, I can't give that to you. I don't want to. I'm being avoidant. So you need to learn to heal that and understand that every single one of us are on a journey and that person is not going to heal you. You have to heal yourself so that you can be secure in that marriage, inshallah. And another thing as well that we need to do is... If you can afford it, get yourself a therapist, talk to somebody, you know, and let it all out with a professional. It really, really, really does help when you just let letting go, getting a professional help you do it. You can't do it 100% on your own. I feel like you have to have that guide with a, with a counsellor who will be able to like help you navigate all of these feelings and thoughts and everything. Because sometimes, especially when you start doing it in the beginning, it's really, really tricky. It's really, really difficult. We have to heal because otherwise you're going to act out in your marriage. And another thing I would say as well is that find out if you have a father wound. Find out if you have a father wound. Or listen, I've got a father wound. I do. <laughs> Well, like, shall I say I did? Because not so much now. So be honest with you, I don't know if I still have a father wound. I don't know. Would I probably will be able to tell if I, when I get married again? But inshallah, like, I'm, it's something that I'm working on so that I don't expect my husband to be like a father figure or something like that. You know? Yeah. Find if you got a father wound or a mother wound. It could be a mother wound. You know? And heal that. And just understand that our parents did the best that they could. They really did the best that they could with what they understood. And just forgiving them, letting go of that resentment that we may be holding towards our parents or family members or friends, letting it go and literally healing from everything. Healing from, you know, broken friendships. Because trust me, friendships, yeah, when they break up, 
especially if you were more if you were more invested because i don't think that if the other person is wasn't invested in the friendship i don't think they've, they 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 really, they don't really care they don't they're not bothered you know but i feel like when you're really invested in a friendship and then it breaks it really really hurts you i've experienced that as well so it's like i've experienced all of these things and the friendship one i haven't overcome it to the level i would like but yeah so heal sisters heal 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 trust me sis it's going to make so much difference being nila when you get into a relationship also i feel like for us to overcome that fear you need to learn about marriage you need to learn about your responsibilities and your rights as a wife you need to learn them and you need to learn your dean because when you don't know your dean and you get into a marriage problems problems so learn your dean understand the basics of islam understand the basics of marriage what you're supposed to do as a wife and just connect with allah and especially those sisters who are single now they've never been married and you know don't even have children now is the time for you to really seek knowledge because when you get married you really become busy the first stage of marriage is that okay I'm, i've got a husband to look after now etc and you're busy and then the kids come a hey, double busy you know so use this free time now to learn as much as possible about your deen understand what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want from you as a servant and also understand how you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to be towards our husbands. Because trust me, I believe we have to cater to our husbands, you know? Like, yes, I had a failed marriage, but, you know, we I'm, when I get married again, that's my responsibility. I have to look after my husband. And likewise, he has his rights and responsibilities, and I expect it back. You understand? So make sure you understand your dean and you take time now to study. Those sisters who don't have no kids, I know you've got other responsibilities, but trust me, you've got a lot of time now. You've got so much free time to seek knowledge. Another thing I would say as well is learn about the Prophet Muhammad wasallam's wives. Learn about, you know, some of their qualities, the level of patience that they had. And that will inspire us to become more like them. I think it's so important to learn about these exceptional women, you know, and for us to start emulating them and copying them and trying to be more like them, you know, because at the end of the day, sisters, we are Muslims. We have to behave like one and we have to copy those who lived before us so that we can become the best version of, of ourselves. Like, I feel like when a lot of people are talking about becoming the best version of yourself, we think more about like the dunya stuff and really forget the, the fact that, to be honest with you, to become the best version of ourselves is putting our religion first, you know, and copying those people who came before us and being more like them. That's the best version of ourselves. And to be like them, we have to read about them. We have to understand, you know, about these women and things like that. And some of the things that they went through and how they were steadfast, how they were patient and how they were resilient. For the sisters who have never been married before and us now, you know, single mothers, you know, single sisters, right? I think it's so important to find something that we love to do. Something like a hobby. Like for me right now, I've got into painting. I really love doing that, you know. And one thing I love about art is that there's no right or wrong way because I'm not your best painter. I'm not the best per like I don't I don't I'm not really good at drawing or anything like that, you know. But I just love the concept of just getting the paint and brush and all of that. You know, I really like doing that. So find something that you really love and find a hobby. And I also like crocheting. I love crocheting. You know, I'm trying to teach my daughter how to crochet and everything. So find something that you love now and pay attention to that. And inshallah, one thing I really want to tell the sis sisters as well, probably in another video, is that when you get married, don't forget who you were. Like if you were somebody who was good at knitting, continue knitting, you know, don't just focus every single thing on your marriage. If you were somebody who was good at art, focus on doing that. If you were good at, you know, um, IT, nowadays that's where the world is going towards it focus on doing things that you really love you know focus on hobbies right now you don't have a husband focus on those things focus on your hobbies focus on developing new skills inshallah and also another thing that i would say is obviously whilst focusing on hobbies and learning new skills and everything i think it's very important for, for us to really start learning practical skills one of them being mainly is learning how to communicate properly a lot of us, we were not taught how to communicate properly. I remember when I was young, I was always penalised for the way I talked or for the way I communicated. But nobody, when I say nobody, nobody actually taught me how to communicate properly. Nobody actually told me, like, Fatima, 
da, 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 da. this is not how you should communicate. You should communicate like this instead. Instead, I was got I got beaten for speaking or communicating how what I how I knew or how I saw the adults communicated, you know? And I think as adults now, it's our responsibility to start on learning those ways of communication and learn how to communicate effectively. Like, yes, we can put our points across. We can communicate effectively with somebody by being respectful. You know, it doesn't have to be in a, an aggressive tone. So learning communication skills is so, so important, especially in marriage. And also learning emotional regulation is so important because in marriage, trust me, your spouse is going to trigger you. Even if you're healed, even if you're somebody who has done the work, sometimes you might feel that trigger. If you know how to regulate yourself, you will be able to control yourself and react in a different way. So those are so important in a marriage, communication skills and emotional regulation, you know? And obviously always putting the deen first, you know, understanding that, you know, subhanAllah, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that um, the strongest man is not the one who can fight, is the one who controls their anger. You know, so those are so, so important to learn. So important. Also, another thing that I believe that will really help to get rid of this fear is learning how to love yourself. I cannot emphasize that enough. I was somebody who once upon a time, I didn't even know what self-love was. If you know your self-worth, you love yourself, you will be able to attract a really good husband. And by this, self-love doesn't necessarily mean that you love yourself in a very arrogant way or self-centered in a sense that, you put your physical health first, your emotional health, making sure you're eating well and exercising well. I remember when I first got married, subhanAllah, like actually before I got married, it's crazy how much I used to look after myself. Like I remember I was obsessed at looking after myself. Like I used to go to gym. I used to get my hair every, my head on. This was before marriage, Jewel. And I remember, not going to lie, after marriage, yeah, you know, you kind of calm down. I want to tell my sisters, inshallah, maybe another video. The way how you used to look after yourself, when you get married, you probably need to up that. You don't give up. But again, I can also say that sometimes women lose interest in looking after themselves when they have so much responsibilities within the household. And when they're basically, you know, doing everything alone, it can take, it can be so difficult to just maintain that level of self-care that they used to do before they had children or before they got married and stuff like that but anyways that should not stop I think that's how I lost love for myself because looking back I think I loved myself a little bit because I really look after myself because I feel like those who love themselves look after themselves but then I let myself go in the marriage I proper did so listen to me the way you look after yourself now start looking after yourself you know physically mentally self-care days are important you know Continue that, be idnillah, when you get married. Inshallah, you'll get married soon, be idnillah ta'ala. And another thing, this can be a topic of discussion, but I really love words of affirmation. I think that's one of my love language. I affirm myself, you know, I tell myself I am beautiful, you know, I tell myself I am worthy, I am good, I am a good wife. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms us in the Quran when he says good, good women are for good men. I am a good woman, so... Allah is going to bless me with a good man, you know? So I do a lot of words of affirmation and things like that. And I feel like they, whilst our brain, of course, don't understand language, but it's the feeling. So if you feel it within yourself that, oh, I am a good woman and you feel it, your brain cannot associate that, you know? Okay, Fatima is saying that she's a good woman and this is how she feels. Wow, this is a good feeling, you know? So I believe that. But anyways, it's something that we need to talk about. If you want, if you have anything to say about that, then comment down below, inshallah. So affirm yourself, sister. Like, I am a good person. I am respectful. So I'm going to get a respectful husband. I am kind. So I'm going to get a kind husband. I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, so I'm going to get somebody who fears Allah. Inshallah. Things like that. You know, I think we should do that. Affirm yourself and make sure you actually feel the emotions of, yeah, I am kind. Not just saying it because the brain can't hear you. No matter how long it takes, sisters... Just know that Allah's timing is the best. You could be having meetings upon meetings upon meetings and it's not working out. And that's okay. You know, it's not supposed to be for you. It's not supposed to work out. So just find peace and comfort in the timing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And just know that a good brother will come and it will take time. Yes, but just know that 
he will come Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best while you're waiting just busy yourself with good deeds before I got married I used to be in the masjid all the time I used to go to sister circles I used to travel far and beyond for lectures and things like that so busy yourself with going to halakas you know developing your community now because it's so important developing strong relationship with sisters not just sisters you know because it really makes a difference when you have a strong connection with someone and then you get married because that's a transition you need people who are going to support you during that journey of marriage you know connecting with your people now is so important for you especially for the sisters who have never been married before to have a community of sisters a group of sisters who are your people because once you transition into wifehood you're going to really need that support you're going to need that connection and that's one thing I didn't know at the time when I got married you know be amongst the sisterhood and really develop great bond because trust me you need it one thing that i failed and please please i want my younger sisters not to repeat this is when you get married you forget about the group of sisters you know you forget about them and you just want to focus on your husband and your family forgetting that you need your people you need friends you really really need friends yes you've got your husband now yes you're growing your family but you really need that female companionship that female connection and i didn't understand that at the time but alhamdulillah now i do so i'm letting you guys know especially the ones who have never been married before the younger sisters you know and also this is just a bonus point you know just to ease the fear a little bit write like love notes to your future husband you don't have to give it to him you don't it's just something to kind of like ease the process whilst you wait kind of thing and just you know take your mind off it a little bit like okay i got this book that i'm writing notes to my future husband and things like that you know you don't have to give it to him when you meet him it's just something for yourself you know and maybe in that notebook you can write like the type of wife that you aspire to be and all of that and then every so often you read that you know because i really want all of us to become better future wives marriage is such a beautiful thing like you may be th i may be sitting here today talking about it even though i had a failed marriage but i was just so happy to be a wife you know like even with the struggles and everything i was just so happy that it completes my dean i think just knowing that your dean is complete is just a beautiful feeling when allah does bless us with him with marriage i want us to just do the best we can to enjoy it you know i want us to be the best versions that we can possibly be and most importantly just remember that every single thing we do in our marriage when Allah blesses us with it is for his sake and his sake only so even if the other person is not as we expect because we're human beings you know we're not going to get perfection like nobody's perfect everyone has some sort of flaws and you know things like that that they have to work on but I want us to remember that anything we do in this dunya is for the sake of Allah only. You know, nobody is perfect, seriously. So I pray that when Allah blesses us with a marriage, that we're able to overlook certain things. And that's where the mercy comes in, to be merciful towards the other person. You know, that you know what, you're just a human, you know, struggling with your own problems. And I ask Allah to make it easier for you. That I have to focus on the responsibilities that Allah has given me. For the sake of Allah first and foremost, and then also for my own calm, for my own peace. One thing that I feel like a lot of people fail to focus on is the fact that the other person might be doing wrong or whatever else that they're doing. And we just focus and busy ourselves on what the other person is not doing rather than focusing on ourselves and doing what we have to do for the sake of Allah. I feel like when we change that perspective and focusing on what we have to do and some of the responsibilities that Allah has placed upon us as wives, that's our main concern. We don't, the other person not doing what they have to do is between them and Allah. We focus on what we have to do. And if it works out, alhamdulillah. If it comes to an end, alhamdulillah. Every single thing, alhamdulillah. Now, sisters, to conclude this video, I know these fears will exist. You know, even when we get married, some of it will still exist, you know. But we don't want it to consume us. And ultimately, we have to always remember that Allah is the leader of absolutely everything and he's the best of planners so my dear sisters it's normal to have these fears but i just want you to know that allah is always in control allah does not make mistakes and whatever allah plans for us we say alhamdulillah allah is the best of planners 
And I don't want any sisters to hold back from such a beautiful blessing. Marriage is a blessing. You know, just being in a marriage and having the ability to spend time with somebody, you know, being emotionally connected, just being able to just love somebody. Because I know a lot of us got a lot of love within us to share. You know, we don't want to hold it to ourselves, you know. Just that amazing feeling is so beautiful. And one of the blessings of marriage, just being able to have children, Allah Mubarak, we want to multiply the ummah. We want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with children who are going to be righteous and pious and leaders of the ummah. So we can't withhold from such a blessing. And I just want you sisters to know, I am a firm believer that there are good brothers out there. Absolutely. There are really, really good brothers out there. But however, we have to be good sisters to attract these good brothers. There's no way how we want good men. However, we're not working on ourselves to become the best version of ourselves. We're not healing. You know, we're not trying to grow Dean wise. We're not going to attract these brothers. They're not even going to look our way. So you want a good person, you want a good brother, you really have to start within yourself first. You really have to heal yourself first and do what you have to do as a Muslima to attract these good brothers. Don't give up. Trust me, don't give up and just keep going. No matter how many meetings you've had, just keep going. That should not discourage you. You're a beautiful sister, Allahumma barik. You're kind, you're loving, you fear Allah. So trust me, Allah is not going to leave you behind when he's blessing other sisters with beautiful marriages you know so just keep firm and keep strong and just keep going and inshallah sisters when the time is right Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to bless you with a beautiful marriage that's going to be a source of peace a source of calm a source of support and most importantly a marriage that will bring you closer to Allah, a marriage to somebody who you both are just going to be striving hardcore for the ultimate prize, Jannatul Firdaus bi idnillah ta'ala. May Allah make this journey easy for all of us and I pray to Allah to bless us with a righteous and pious spouse who will be the coolness of our eyes. Amin to my amin. So that's it for this video, sisters. I hope I've mentioned some points that are okay you know and if there's anything you have to add to this you know points please leave them in the comments below i appreciate you guys being here and inshallah ta'ala i will see you all in my next video assalamu alaikum